If there's anything that makes me cringe more in the gaming community, it's those fake little nerd-ass wannabe mobile gamers. There ain't no way you can unironically call yourself a gamer and then whip out your cell phone. This is a thought I've had ever since I've seen people play Candy Crush, Poke Go, and Raid Shadow Legends at work. But recently, something inside me has changed. I'm sure we've all gone through those phases in our lives where we have less and less time to game. Work, family, friends, and alternative forms of entertainment can get in the way of being able to sit down and play your favorite video games. Recently, I got a new phone, the Samsung S23 Ultra, and when I heard about the specs in this thing, I was very surprised. I spent days customizing it to do all the silly little unnecessary things that made the tiny nerd in me do a happy dance, but somehow I stumbled upon Android emulation, and recently, that has been my preferred way to play my games. Now let me just get this out of the way right now. If you want to play Call of Duty, or Red Dead Redemption 2, or some new AAA or indie game, this is not the video for you. I've been trying the Steam Link app and it's not entirely reliable. You're dealing with latency from your network, you have to be on the same network as your streaming computer is, and at that point you may as well play your games on your beast of a machine PC anyway. See, the thing is, I've been into emulation for a while. I've been emulating GameCube, 64, Wii, Wii U, and I even buy Switch games and burn the ISO to my PC so I can play them on my preferred platform. But the thing is, when I sit down to play a game, I'm not launching Dolphin. I don't open Seamu or Yuzu. I mean, the last emulator I played on was the Xenia emulator, but that was because I wanted to 100% Red Dead 1 before I started Red Dead 2 again. Which I did, by the way! And if you loved Red Dead 1, Xenia works! But that's besides the point. The point is, when I sit at my PC to play a video game, I launch Steam. What I found though is downloading Dolphin onto my phone, Citra, and even Skyline and Yuzu, I can play all of these games that I haven't been getting to on my PC. The other day I had an appointment for my van. The guy asked me if I was going to get picked up and I said, no, I'll just wait here in the lobby. I went, I sat down, I hooked my controller to my phone, and I started gaming away. I started going through Mario Sunshine, which is a game I haven't touched in years. The Dolphin emulator is one of the most optimized emulators on PC and Android, and I run all of my GameCube and Wii games flawlessly. The phone doesn't even get hot. Same with Citra. Any of these 3DS games that I never got a chance to play, I've been really diving into them. I can even take phone calls while I game and not miss a beat. If any of this is interesting to you, you might be curious about the controller that I picked up. This is the Game Vice Flex, and I chose this controller for a few reasons that might be important to you. Firstly, it accommodates almost every phone, even foldable phones. Most of these telescopic controllers require you to take off your phone's case in order to use them, but this controller comes with adapters, so you never need to do that. It also has full-size thumbsticks just like the ones on an Xbox controller, so you're getting a wider range of motion as opposed to the ones that use the Switch thumbsticks. Now, those are pretty good, but I feel like I'm barely getting any travel out of them, whereas this feels like a full-on controller. The triggers are analog, which means racing games actually feel how much pressure you're putting into the gas. The buttons are membrane, which was a preference for me. Don't get me wrong, I like clicky buttons, but this just feels like an Xbox controller, which made it very easy to get used to. You also have USB-C pass-through so you can charge your phone while you're gaming. Unfortunately, it is just a charger. You can't transfer media with this port, which would have been nice for adding new ROMs so I didn't have to unhook it, but whatever. And then it has a headphone jack on the left hand side so if you're at the airport, you won't be bothering your neighbors. Either that or you could just Bluetooth some earbuds or headphones to the phone and use that. The only thing this doesn't have is Bluetooth, which don't get me wrong, the USB-C connection is better for response time, but if I could also Bluetooth this to my PC and play my games with this, you would literally never need another controller, and I recommend that they add that in version 2. When you want to start using the controller, all you have to do is open it up, pop your phone inside, and you can even map all the controls in a game-by-game -game basis on the emulators themselves. Now here's the kicker. These new phones are so powerful you can actually play Switch games. There are two emulators for the Switch on Android right now. Skyline, which has recently been ceased and desisted by Nintendo, screw you Nintendo, but don't worry, that project isn't dead yet. And then recently, Yuzu has moved over to Android and you can even download it on the Google Play Store. Now, of course, I can't tell you where to get ROMs or product keys or BIOS for your emulators. I will say though, the internet is your friend on that one if you want some more information. Catch my drift. But there are tons of emulators to pick from and I'll share a list right now of the best working ones on Android. Firstly and obviously, RetroArch is a good one to recommend. It's basically your one-stop shop for emulation. It supports so many different cores from Atari, Genesis, 64, Arcade, DS, Game Boy, and recently GameCube is on there as well. 
You can get the app in the Google Play Store, but GitHub will have the best and latest version, so I recommend that. RetroArch is kinda complicated though, so if you want another option for one-stop shop emulators, Lemuroid is great. It's basically the easier version of RetroArch, and it has nearly all the same cores. If you like standalone emulators, then you have Pizza Boy for your Game Boy Color games. If you want DS emulators, then I'd recommend Drastic or Melon. Melon isn't as good, but it's free, whereas Drastic is $4.99 on the Google Play Store. Neither of them have ads, and they're both updated frequently, so that one's up to you. Then you have 3DS, and I'd recommend Citra. Now, you can get this on the Google Play Store, or you can get it on the GitHub, and I would recommend the GitHub. Citra didn't work well on my phone, but Citra MMJ works flawlessly. For PSP emulation, PPSSPP is a great emulator. It's free, it's on Google Play, and it runs games perfectly. You can also get the gold version if you want to support the devs, but both versions are the exact same. For the NES, you can use NES.EMU, which is $4.99, and if that bothers you, Retroarch or Lemuroid are free options with really solid cores that'll run your NES games. As for 64, M64 Plus FZ is a great one. However, the free version does contain ads, and the pro version is $3.99. You can use Retroarch for 64 games if you don't like that. Then there's the PS1. Duck Station is the way to go here. For GameCube, you have the Dolphin Emulator, and I wouldn't recommend anything else. This is the best emulator out of all of them in my opinion. Plays games flawlessly, and my phone doesn't even get hot when I play. Dolphin also supports Wii games, which are a bit of a pain to set up input-wise, since you needed nunchucks for some games, and in others you held the controller sideways, but it's easy enough to work around all that. The Wii side of things will heat up your phone a little bit though. If the Google Play Store version of Dolphin doesn't work well for you, there are other forks of Dolphin geared towards other devices. I'd recommend researching the best version for your phone, and then getting it from their GitHub page. For PS2 emulation, I recommend Aether SX2. This app runs very well so long as you have a new phone. If your phone's a little bit older, it may struggle with this emulator. You can also try out an app called Play, which also works well. It's not as far along as Aether, but it runs really well and doesn't require you to install your own BIOS file. If you want to emulate using Aether SX2 and you don't know where to find a BIOS file, well, the internet is your friend. Then we have Nintendo Switch emulation. Skyline is honestly the best right now, and unfortunately Nintendo shut that project down. They told the developers that they would sue them if they kept going, so the devs are laying low right now and working on a different project. Skyline, however, is still downloadable from the GitHub. There are a few versions, the best version being Edge 69, which you can find in the Skyline Discord, and most games honestly run well. The emulator is certainly not perfect, Mario Odyssey for example runs like crap, Breath of the Wild is the same, and certain games have pretty awful frame rates, but for the indie titles, you'll be more than fine to play them better than the Switch itself does. Your phone will get hot though. Now there's also the Yuzu emulator, which was just released on the Google Play Store. This app is brand new and runs games fairly well. The team is working hard on this emulator, so give it a few months and it should be performing really great, but again, your phone will get hot. I recommend getting one of those gaming fans if you want to play Switch games on your cell phone. Now I've also heard of people talking about Egg NS, which is another emulator, but I have a moral dilemma with this one. Firstly, you have to have a Gamester X2 controller in order to use this emulator, which makes it feel kind of like a gimmick. The games run alright, sure, but they stole source code from Yuzu to get the emulator to work in the first place. You also have to have an always online connection to play your games with this emulator, and it doesn't really play games very well in the first place. It feels like it was thrown together by any means necessary to help sell the games for X2. So, in my opinion, stay away from this one, and realistically, unless you have a powerful cooler for your phone, or you have a dedicated gaming phone that you don't really care about getting too hot, I wouldn't recommend Switch emulators just yet. There's a lot of optimization that needs to be done before these emulators are ready. Now, I will stand behind what I said at the beginning of this video. I don't give a crap about Call of Duty Mobile or PUBG Mobile, I don't care about playing Minecraft on my phone, and I'm not interested in PokeGo either. I'm not a mobile gamer. I simply don't see the appeal. Mobile games these days feel like lottery machines that are supposed to give you a boost of dopamine for doing absolutely nothing but wasting time. But emulation is what these recent cell phones are for. These are the kinds of games that we should be getting, and I cannot tell you how nice it is to finally have a portable system that can carry around and give me access to all of these games that I've been meaning to emulate on my PC. When I'm home, PC games all the way. On the go, emulation is where it's at. I don't know how I fell into this rabbit hole, but I am so glad I ended up here. I mean, sometimes it's annoying. 
like I'll be out in town and I'm playing some train simulator game and then my appointment starts and it just derails everything. <sighs> Bye guys.